from the sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and as always, my co-host, Malik Hill. We are two days away from Thanksgiving, but there's tons and tons of sports going on. I love when the holidays are around because Thanksgiving weekend and everything, there's always a ton of sports. And then, of course, when we get into Christmas, there's also a ton of sports. Uh, so it's just one of those holidays we just get to eat, sleep, and watch sports. Um, Malik. Real quick, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Go. So I'm not that big a fan of turkey. I'm not really a stuffing guy. What what else is on the list? Honestly, I I don't know what. Are you a canned cranberries or homemade? (laughs) Neither. Neither? (laughs) No. Uh, Do you like rolls? Yes. Okay. See, there are certain things that I don't, that like are overall like family dinner stuff. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I'm a big rolls fan. Do you partake in the green bean casserole? No, sir. Do you like pie? No. <laughs> well, I honestly haven't even tried in like any pies, but I've just never been. I've looked at them. I've never been interested. So, so what do you eat at Thanksgiving then? I'm, <laughs> my my family fixes several different things on Thanksgiving, and you outside don't of eat the, any of them outside of like the four or five Thanksgiving specific things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm a simple man, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> simple man okay maybe maybe a little too simple but yeah that's that's fine that's fine um i like it all um so yeah lots of sports to talk about um the biggest being michigan ohio state this time last year also the same deal but this is the first time that both teams are undefeated since 2006 is it yeah so it's wild i wish i went back and looked at what i said last year going into this game because i have no idea what i predicted uh, I probably said they were going to lose. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really sure. Um, but, yeah, Michigan just got away with a scare this past weekend. Barely beaten Illinois. Uh, granted, part of it due to Blake Corum only playing one half, but still getting over 100 yards and a touchdown as usual. Um, you have any concerns with Blake going into this game at all for Ohio State? Honestly, uh, I don't have big concerns. From everything he said and Jim Harbaugh said, he's going to be good to go. Uh, even if he's not 100%, like 80% to 90% of Blake Corum is better than a lot of running backs. So mm-hmm. I'll take that. Yeah. Um, what would you say is like the thing that Michigan needs to do to win this game this year? Is it just the they, same they formula? Literally, they, they literally have to, they have to copy and successfully redo the script from last year. Mm-hmm. They they have to come out strong. They can't let Ohio State and C.J. Stroud get major momentum because there were many drives last year where they hit they hit on big plays several times. C.J. Stroud threw for over 300. Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave made NFL receiver-type plays, and that's most likely going to have a, happen again with Marvin Harrison and Emeka Agbuka, Agbuka. But if you can limit those to two to a drive maybe, don't let them extend to touchdowns, stop them short, make them get field goals or no points, and then bully them. Mm-hmm. You, the offensive line, your, your O-line is top three, maybe best in the country. Your D-line is just as strong as Ohio State's. They they got some standouts that can do some extra things, but ours is just as tough. And honestly, I don't think they've played a defense – as good as Michigan's all season. I mean, the Notre Dame game to start the season might be like a sneak preview of what this game was going to be, but Notre Dame overall wasn't strong enough with a new head coach, and they they were figuring everything out on mm-hmm. the fly week one, and they were able to play Ohio State tough. And a lot of other teams have been able to play them tough but haven't had the extra things to really get to them. Like Penn State had them for three quarters. Mm-hmm. And then they let it slip, and Ohio State hit on three big plays in, like, three minutes. Right. I think Michigan is less likely to allow that. And after what Chase Brown did to them when they played Illinois last week, they're going to be facing most likely, I think his name is Dallas Hayden, the true freshman running back for Ohio State, had his breakout game last week against Maryland. Dallin. Dall- yeah, Dallin Hayden. Yeah. I don't think – Last year, they kept Travion Henderson in check, and I think most likely they'll be able to keep Dallin Hayden in check because 
Their O-line still isn't great. They've been good and really good some games, but against good D-lines, it's been shown that Ohio State can struggle running the ball. And when that happens, things start to get tight. And that's when Michigan can take advantage of it. And I think they'll be able to. I'm not sure if they'll win. I, I honestly think it's more likely that Ohio State wins by like two touchdowns than Michigan just outright winning. Mm-hmm. Like, the most likely scenario is this game coming down to like the last few minutes. Yeah. Like, it's, it's in the like low to mid 20s. And it depends on whatever team gets the ball last. That's probably what it'll come down to. And then it'll come down to whether or not J.J. McCarthy can make the plays against Ohio State's sketchy DBs Mm -hmm. who Talia Tungvaloa was able to take advantage of last week because he had a really good game against Ohio State. And they took Ohio State to the brink almost. But it's it should be a great game. I don't I don't expect blowouts on either. It's possible that Ohio State can just hit the gas and Michigan can't catch up. But I think Michigan is going to come in with a good game plan to try and neutralize that. And Ohio State always tries to get their running game going. Half the time it hasn't worked. Half the time it has. We'll see what happens. <sighs> um, I think a lot of this game might fall on JJ. And I think that might be a bad thing for Michigan. I was, I thought that exact same thing last year with Cade McNamara. And he didn't put up good stats, and they still dominated. Yeah. It's hard to replicate that again, especially in Columbus. Mm. But I think they're, I don't think they're going to make it complicated. I think they're going to draw up simple stuff. Him making the simple throws isn't hard. It's the like the deep throws and the, yeah, the extra stuff where he has a problem being consistent. Mm-hmm. And – Ohio State's de- defense being vulnerable. Honestly, I think Illinois' defense is tougher than Ohio State's overall. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it, it won't take much for them to get through. Uh, I've We've seen Michigan start really well many times. And, yeah, go go ahead with what you were saying. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I just have a scary feeling that, you know, C.J. Stroud is back for vengeance. And I don't, I don't know. I feel like you think this will be his best game, like of his season career potentially, because he's he's been on and off the last few games. Maybe, but I don't know. Like he's had some wild ones where he's had like you know six touchdowns and all that stuff. I don't know if he necessarily does that, but maybe it's his best competitive game. I guess. I just have this feeling that I don't know outside of Blake Corum what Michigan does. And I know that's kind of what it was last year too, but I just I don't I don't know, and I don't feel like Michigan has the same kind of playmakers that they had last year on defense, and it's it's just one of those feelings that I feel like this is set up for a really good game, and Ohio State might just blow Michigan out, and I don't necessarily know why. I just. Maybe I'm just not a believer in this Michigan team. And I was a little skeptical last year, too. But I think I bought into it a little easier than I did than I have this year. Um, so I'm just struggling to figure out how Michigan wins this game outside of Blake Corum. Like, if he's not 100%, it may actually affect the game. And even if they say that he's 100%, like I, like I keep saying, at some point I would assume or think that a team would try to just neutralize Michigan's run game. And if you lose to JJ, you lose to JJ and you move on. Um, But I don't know if I've seen a team fully commit to that, I guess. And maybe it's credit to Michigan's offensive line. Um, But I'm a little nervous for this game. All the other top teams are kind of falling apart. Maybe this is just Ohio State's year. No Alabama. Georgia still might be there. Uh, well, they'll have to see that. Georgia, I think Georgia has been the only team to show that championship level. Mm-hmm. I don't think any other team really has throughout the season. Yeah, and I'm not I mean, saying Ohio that... State has, has shown those short bursts because they're so talented. Right. They're going to. But Georgia has shown, like, yeah, we're still Georgia, and mm-hmm. you have to be afraid of us. Yeah. I just think that that Illinois game 
showed too many weaknesses from Michigan. And I know they have like injuries. Like they had what they were on their third string tight end. I couldn't tell. Third string I couldn't back. tell if Donovan Edwards was hurt or they just sat him out for like he was hurt. I, I couldn't. Yeah, I, I wasn't one hundred percent sure. So they were. I don't, I don't know if he's playing this week. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not sure either. I just know that they were on like their third string tight end. Honestly, that freshman tight end was open several times, and JJ just missed him. <laughs> I'm not even afraid about him. Yeah, because he's he's shown how talented he is already. Mm-hmm. It just it's whether or not JJ can hit him when he's open. Yeah, and I think that's part of it too. Like CJ's been here in big games before. Obviously, he hasn't really. He hasn't really won them, uh, so this is this would be the time for him to do it. And, and I don't know. I just I feel like eventually Michigan's not going to be able to do what they've been doing. And I, I said that last year, and they won. So maybe it's a good thing that I'm skeptical. But I just feel like Ohio State has more of the complete package, and I'm nervous that if they get up early, I have no idea – what Michigan's going to do. You go I understand ahead. that. I will fix your camera while you're talking. <laughs> yeah, I understand it. Um, against Penn State, Ohio State showed that they have the ability to just take off when they need to. But my problem is they haven't been able to show that consistently. Just like Michigan, they played against so many teams. The Big Ten has been down this year. They both have played against so many teams that are either bad or just average. And if anyone wins this game by blowout, it will be Ohio State. But I I, I don't see Ohio State being able to get their run game going like they would like they want to. They know how Michigan wants to play. And I think they also know C.J. Stroud has never had a big passing game. They've never had a huge passing game in these conditions. Mm -hmm. When they play in warm weather, when they play in domes, it's off to the races. And they look awesome. Mm -hmm. When it comes to this type of game where Michigan is coming at them and saying, you know exactly how we're going to play. And if you don't match us, then it's going to be tough for you. I have to see Ohio State do it. I think it's going to be really hard for them to get the run game going. And if they just put it all on C.J. Stroud's shoulders, can he take it? Yeah. Well, it's definitely going to help that Ohio State is hosting this game. Yes. Uh, it being in Col- I've never seen Michigan win at Columbus. Yeah. So this is even a bigger task than last year. Um. Now, the good news is that whoever loses this game, if as long as it's competitive, they still have a really good chance to make it into the college football playoff. Um, Tennessee lost. Unfortunately, Hennon Hooker is done for the season. Tore his ACL. Yeah. Probably going to hurt his draft stock. Probably makes me nervous that I don't want the Lions to go after him now. Even though we could I can use understand it now. Yeah. Even though we could still do have Jared Goff as a bridge. Um so Tennessee kind of falls out and Alabama's basically done. The only other team that could really jump in there, USC has a chance. Yeah. They gotta beat Notre Dame and win the conference. Yes. And LSU, technically, if they pull out the miracle and beat Georgia yeah. in the SEC I, championship. I honestly don't think anybody sees that happen. I don't either, but, yeah, you know, crazy things happen sometimes. So, I think it's, you never know. Um, but I think that's a good thing for both of these teams. Um, with Tennessee losing, like, they have a good chance to stay in it. If they, if it's close. Again, we can't have a blowout. Um, any other things you want to talk about about this Michigan Ohio State game? Whoever wins the line of scrimmage wins the game. Prediction. I think Ryan Day has been being criticized a lot by the Ohio State fan base throughout the season. 
because I think Ohio State fans are starting to see that without a very a really well balanced like game, you can't just p- do all passing and win. Mm. You got to have that balance, and Michigan has been imbalanced where they just like to run, 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 and then like twenty to thirty percent passing. But that's how they were last year, like we said. Mm-hmm. I think there will be a lot of pressure on C.J. Stroud. Because this is supposed to be his Heisman moment. And like I said, if this if the running game gets off to a slow start and they put it all on his shoulders, can he go out there and throw them to a win in this huge game? Mm-hmm. Because if he throws a few incomplete passes and in the, in the passing game isn't running at full motion, I think those fans are going to get restless. And they've already been kind of... They, they've... They they see they're not as dominant as they they've been in the past few years. Mm-hmm. They're undefeated, but they're not the regular Ohio State. So what will the atmosphere be if Ohio State can't get off to a great start and Michigan is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage? Yeah, how do they respond? I mean, they responded well to getting punched in the face against Penn State, right? And they were able to recover. Mm-hmm. So they did it once, and they did it on the road. My prediction, (sighs) I'm going to go 34-24 Ohio State. Oh, okay. 34-24. I'm going to write it down. Yeah, last year it was 42-27 Michigan. This year I got 34-24 Ohio State. Wow, can't even go with your boys. I have a feeling that I picked Ohio State last year again. I mean, I, I picked them last year. So, yeah, let's, why not just trying to yeah. just swing the odds in your favor? Uh, th- who knows if that'll happen? I'm I can go- still barely believe last year happened, sir. What am I going to do? I'm going to go. Oof. Yeah, there there may be more. Sen- there are more scenarios where Ohio State wins than than where Michigan wins. But there are scenarios where Michigan wins, like last year. I'm going to go 42-20. I don't know where I got that from. Okay. Ohio State. Sorry, buddy. Um, I don't know. I just have a bad feeling about it. Maybe it's because Michigan's having all the injuries at the wrong time. Um, maybe I'm just blind, but I don't know. It was wild that they won last year. It would be wild if they won again this year. As always, I do hope that it's a better game than that. At the end of the day, I do want it to be a close game uh, because, again, first time these two teams are undefeated since 2006 playing each other at the end of the season with a lot on the line. Um, And seeding in the college football playoff could be pretty big Um, because most likely whoever loses this, if they get in, they got to play Georgia. So, we'll have to see. Um, on to, is there anything else you want to touch on for college football that we didn't touch on? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, like you said, Tennessee got blasted. TCU won a close game. Ohio State won a close game. All top four teams. were Georgia only played, scored 16 on Kentucky, but it was kind of close. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I can't think of anything else crazy. I will just tell you what. I thought the TCU Baylor, I thought, so this is why betting is a bad thing to do. This is why gambling is bad. But I thought the TCU minus two against Baylor. Yes, Baylor, you know, they're a decent team. But I thought minus two was a lock. How do these one point. <laughs> bookies do this where it is a one-point win for TCU? To me, that is wild. Don't gamble, kids. Um, and I will stay away from college <laughs> yeah. football the rest of the season because of that right there. Very smart decision. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, unfortunate for Tennessee. Uh, just bad way to start or to end such a, a good season for them. Um, yeah, I don't. there's not much else. I mean, USC beat UCLA in a shootout, and Caleb Williams is a monster. Mm-hmm. 
he's gonna he's probably gonna be the projected number one pick like next year. Yeah. With Drake May as a close second. The ACC championship could be interesting. Clemson yeah. and uh North Carolina. North Carolina has the better quarterback. Couple weeks here. Um but yeah. Um we're not gonna mention the other Michigan team because it's just bad. That game right there. You don't want to hear about it. Cool, man. But to, listen, can I just say one thing? Sure. If Mel doesn't fire everybody, it, will there be a reason to have confidence going into the next season? I will say. So what I'll say. At least like all the problematic parts, which are many of them. I'll say Michigan State is lucky that Navy won a game without completing a pass. I will say that. At least they're, everybody knows they were on the option, and they, they've they been doing the same thing for years. Navy threw the ball one time, did not complete the pass, and they beat UCF 17-14. Yeah. to 14. Incredibly. I, think, I think almost all of their wins, they've only completed like <laughs> one or two passes. Yeah. Meanwhile. Yeah. Indiana, that, that right there. It's hard to explain that one. Yeah. Michigan State, you know, right when, right when we thought that they were kind of coming back for – a decent bowl game or something like that. They just get uh, yeah. Now they finish at Penn State and uh, it's rough. Penn State's playing pretty well right now. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. We're not going to talk about them guys. <laughs> uh, but we can transition into their basketball team. Yes. Because their basketball team just keeps winning. Uh, they beat Villanova a few days ago. Um. 73 71, another thriller, so to speak. I didn't see like the last 10 minutes of the game, so I didn't see when it got really close. Yeah. Um, kind of wild that uh, Villanova just barely missed uh, the game winner. They got a chance at it, just missed. Um, Tyson Walker, I, I don't know if you listened to the podcast last week, but he played way better in this game than he did the first couple. And I mean, AJ Hogger played well too. Yeah, almost got a triple double, and it was perfect because last week we talked about Joey Hauser and Malik Hall leading the team. Who's going to step up next? And how terrible the guard play was. Hoggard, Tyson Walker led this game. They basically helped seal this game. Uh, so that's a big plus. And then now they're going to play Alabama um, on Thursday, which will be exciting. That's at night. So that's the night cap after we get to watch the Lions. It'll be right after you probably wake up from your mid-afternoon nap. Um, but Michigan State has looked really good. They're ranked 12th now after those uh, that close game against Gonzaga and the wins over Kentucky and Villanova. So they're looking really solid and again they're still super surprising to me um to be playing this well already um let's see what was i gonna bring up and right, we can bring up the the actual rankings after um because there's some interesting games um speaking of uh you know that disappointing other team in football it's michigan state in basketball it's your wolverines uh, what are you seeing out of the Wolverines lately um, that's causing this concern, Malik? So at the moment, uh, they don't do anything well. Mm -hmm. They have maybe two quality three-point shooters and Joey Baker and uh, Jet Howard. Hunter Dickinson has been the saving grace. Mm -hmm. because he everybody knew he was going to be one of the best bigs in, in college, and he's playing like it. Yeah. Jalen Llewellyn has uh, been a bust out of the gates. There's a lot of season left, mm -hmm. but out of the gates, it has not worked. I'm In the game against Ohio, he finally hit a few threes after not hitting any of the, his first few games. Yeah. Uh, Kobe Bufkin can't find any rhythm. Uh, let's see what else. <laughs> Terrence Williams. I'm happy with Terrence Williams. He's, I'm happy with him. He's cooled off though offensively. Like, well, he he doesn't have much game. Honestly, he's not going to get you a bunch of buckets. Like he he's going to hit some open threes. He's going to get some putbacks. Mm -hmm. He's doing the dirty work and hitting open shots. And I'm he's that guy, and I love that he plays that role. We need that type of guy. 
But yeah, Doug McDaniel, he's calmed down some, but he's still pretty raw. Mm-hmm. Terrace Reed off the bench as the backup center. He's he's raw too. He hasn't figured it all out yet. Yeah. There are decisions that were made in the off season and to start the season that I think didn't need to happen and can be changed. What didn't need to happen is I don't know why they had to bring in Jalen Llewellyn. Frankie Collins played well in the tournament. I thought he was going to be a really good starter coming into the season. Mm. And you bring in Jalen Llewellyn from Princeton, who was a high-level Ivy League point guard. And Frankie Collins immediately transfers. You play Arizona State in the third game of the season, or fourth. I can't remember which I think it was fourth. Mm-hmm. And Frankie Collins is decent, and Arizona State runs you off the floor. Jalen Llewellyn looks terrible in that game. Juwan has a lot to figure out. Yeah. He has a lot to figure out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long it's going to take for this team to mesh and figure things out. But they need to figure it out soon. Yeah. And I personally believe that you could get more out of your starting lineup if you make one switch. Hmm. I think you need to start Joey Baker and bring Kobe Bufkin off as the sixth man. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. You get no consistency out of Kobe right now. And I understand you want to build his confidence because he's he has the talent to be a go-to scorer in his career and once conference play comes. But Joey Baker has shown when he gets open shots – and he hits a few, he can really get it going. Against Pitt, he hit five threes, I think. It doesn't take much to get him going. And you need to have him out there. He's experienced. He's smart. He won't make dumb mistakes. And he can be the best shooter in the lineup. Yeah. Kobe Bufkin as the sixth man. Could have him with that second unit. He could calm things down. He could bring the ball up sometimes if Doug is erratic. And he could have more chances to get the ball rolling on offense. Because with Jet Howard out there, he's the number one option in terms of on the wing. Hunter Dickinson is always going to get priority touches because mm-hmm. he's one of the best bigs in the country. That's a freshman and your experienced best big. That leaves Kobe third. And because of that, Jalen Llewellyn can't get going at all because he's more of a combo guard. He plays point guard, but he scores just as much as he play makes. Mm-hmm. How is he supposed to get going if Kobe's supposed to get going and Jet Howard is getting going and Hunter Dickinson needs his touches? How do you balance that out? Yeah. I think you balance it out by putting Joey Baker in there. <laughs> I think their other problem is they're shooting a lot of threes. And yes. I don't feel like they're well-designed threes. No, oh, they're not really. So, like... You think back to the John Beeline days. Michigan was known for moving the ball, getting open looks. They're honestly one of the first teams to start doing it. And they made a ton of deep tournament runs. And now they're still shooting a lot of threes, which is, it's fine. But you don't have the guys to exactly do that. Yes. Terrence Williams is the best, well, Jet is the best shooter in the lineup right now. But in terms of other wing players, it's Terrence Williams right now. Yeah. Who's the second best three-point shooter. And the, the other problem with that too is like, they're not necessarily designing up plays to get those open looks. They're just kind of happening. And so you don't get into a rhythm. You're not building that chemistry that you're talking about. Like this is that perfect team of they should be inside out with Hunter Dickinson. You throw it into him. Sometimes he, you know, spins left, left hook, makes it every time. Or they draw a double team, you kick it out. Just got to knock down the shots. That's when they've been at their best, honestly. Against Pitt, that's how they ran them out the gym. Right. And that's where I think Joey Baker can come in. Uh, More of a spot-up shooter. Kobe Bufkin, like you said, is more of... He's a scorer. He's a scorer, so he'll be more of a creator. Yeah. But that doesn't create space. You're clogging everything up. Yeah. And this classic Michigan team is creating space. Work inside out. And they're just not doing that. And I think that's part of their problem, and that's... Like, they're shooting a lot of threes, but they're shooting poorly. And I think if you start spacing the floor more, moving the ball better, 
those shots will start knocking down. People will build confidence. It makes the game way easier. Just look at, like, Michigan State is doing that. And that's not normally, they're, per se, They're what very they well balanced. Yes. Michigan State is normally well balanced, but they're also making threes this year. Yeah. That's what's wild. Um, Michigan State just has a turnover issue, so that's a whole other story. But Michigan, I think, has potential. These things can be fixed. Yeah. Right. But, oh boy. Next Tuesday, they're taking on Virginia. And if they are not. He's off to a serious start. And if they're they're not like Virginia again. Yes. If they're not ready, they're going to get punched in the mouth. Just like Arizona State. Yes. And I, let's both say, did you watch some of that Arizona State game? No. <laughs> no highlights? No. Okay. Arizona State. Let, let me look at the percentages really quick. I just remember looking at the, the stats. So. Arizona yeah. State shot 57.9% from three and 60%. and 60% from the field. Yeah. I don't think Arizona State will do that again for the rest of the season. No, and that's going to happen in college basketball. We see it every year, especially yes. in tournament time. Like, that happens. Um, but I also think Michigan hasn't been good on defense. Right. You yeah. let guys get into a rhythm, that will happen. Right. Even against teams that won't do that. Mm-hmm. They had to so, go into overtime against Ohio. Ohio shot 25% from the three. 35% for the field. But yet, they went into overtime with Michigan. So, that's... Hunter saved them. Definitely an, an issue. But, yeah. So, Michigan's got some things to figure out. Um, as we mentioned, Virginia, they just took down my team of Illinois, who I said was going to be... Kind of that surprise team this year. I think they'll still be really good. Yeah, I Illinois do, too. Has. I don't think it's going to affect everything, but it's wild to see uh, Virginia back to potentially a powerhouse. Yeah. Um, and I love it because I, I like Virginia. Yeah, I think I think Michigan might be the only team in the top 25 that's 4-1 and one and dropped out of the top 25. That Arizona State game pretty much put them out. Yeah. And then that close game to Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they're four and one, and they were in the top twenty five, and they they were twenty two when they dropped out. Mm-hmm. And Michigan State's up to twelve, and they honestly deserve it. Yeah, Kentucky fell only to fifteen. I know they played Michigan State and Zaga, but listen, it's it's like college, it's like college football. The powerhouses they get like leniency. Yeah, I was just surprised because they'll get chances to mess up. They didn't do great. Against Gonzaga. They definitely did not. <laughs> so, interesting. Again, Michigan State's going to get Alabama uh, coming up, so that will be another good test. Yeah. And Notre Dame will probably be a solid team in the ACC at least. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. And, uh, of course, just like we thought, um, the other Big Ten teams are coming alive. Haven't really played a ton of teams yet. But like Maryland starting five and zero, Purdue three and zero, Iowa three and zero. Again, it's super early, but like Purdue got a win over Marquette. It's not bad. They're about to play West Virginia um, on Thanksgiving, and then they play Florida State. So that's should be interesting. One thing we need to mention: Chris Murray. He's averaging twenty four and eight. Yep, barely missing. He just scored thirty without shooting free throws in his last game. Yeah, T T is literally a clone of his brother. Mm-hmm. It's scary. Yeah, I mean, I think he's looked good. I thought he looked good at times last year, but, you know, Keegan just kind of was the guy. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, the same thing with Iowa. They're going to have the ACC Big Ten uh, challenge. They're going to play Georgia Tech. All the teams are pretty much in their tournament, preseason tournament stuff right now. Right. So, we'll start getting a better idea of what these teams are in the coming games because they're going to start playing uh, some bigger teams. And it should be very interesting. Yeah, Michigan schedule. Oh, yeah, not easy. We didn't even mention that Gonzaga lost. They oh, lost. Yeah. They, they lost, lost to Texas. Texas. Texas looked for real by nineteen. Texas, yeah. Texas got transferred Tyrese Hunter from Iowa State. Mm-hmm. He was an All Conference dude as a freshman last year. Yep. Borderline five star comes to Texas and he's every bit of that talent. Yeah, he was balling. And Texas overall just played great. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if Gonzaga's they, – they might be missing that extra punch. Yeah. I, I think they're vulnerable. 
But uh, they did they did kind of surprise me against uh, Kentucky. I, I think Kentucky is a little overrated, but uh, Gonzaga showed me something in that game at least. Yeah. So there's that. Um, I think Creighton. I really like them right now. Yeah. I like their starting five, like their their balance, their shooters. I really like the way Creighton plays. They could be. They're already. They are predicted to kind of make a run, mm-hmm. and be one of like the best Creighton teams in school history. But yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoy watching them so far. Yeah, I mean they were able to keep uh, Kevin O'Banner in check for Texas Tech, which yeah, it's not an easy, easy thing to do. And uh, I mean Creighton's super well balanced, uh, and they always shoot the ball really well. So yeah, I, I mean I agree. I think they always um, have a good chance. To do something. Yeah. And shouts out to my guys, the San Diego State Aztecs. <laughs> They've been a good team for They're a while. 3-0. They beat Texas Tech yesterday. Matt Bradley, my guy, the lefty shooter, mm-hmm. put up, I think, 15 or 16 on them. They're going to be really good. Yeah. I think it's going to be another year where, like, anybody can, anybody can take it. Yes, we might have uh, Virginia back. Maybe Texas is for real. Uh, but at the top, we still got UNC, still got Kansas, Houston playing well. Um, so it, it's going to be an interesting season. I love the way that college basketball has gone in the last couple of years. Have you watched any of Duke? No. I'm I not, think watch, watch the highlights of their game against um not a Kansas. Duke, not a Duke guy, but I think watch Kyle Filipowski. I think he's there. I think he's a guy you'd like. All right. Six eleven can do everything. Mm-hmm. He's really good. True freshman. Gotcha. Cool. And that's our uh, college basketball wrap up. So now we got to get into uh, week twelve of our picks. What what happened last Big week? Big week. Big week. Thanksgiving just, week. Just just tell me that the same thing happened that it pretty much happens every. So week. here we go, Malik. I will tell you exactly what happened. It was a wild week. Um, a lot of close games, actually, except for the Lions. Um, you got nine okay. correct picks to put you up at 79. And I got 11. Wow. I pulled away <laughs> wow. just slightly. I'm at 83. So I got the Tennessee Titans pick, uh, Detroit, Atlanta. Um, what other one did we? We got 11, 11 out of how many games? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Nice. That was a good week. Nice. It was a good week. Um, you also took Houston for some reason, apparently. Um, it was just a, it was just a yeah. screw it pick. I took Washington. Yeah. I got Dallas. Yeah. That, that Minnesota loss, man. That was real bad. Yeah. Real rough. Um, so, yeah. Interesting, crazy week. Uh, you basically won New England on a technicality. That was a wild finish. <laughs> I can't believe that that even happened. Winning on a what, punt return touchdown to end the game. We'll we'll talk we'll talk about that. Uh, do they play this week? The Jets. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, there's no buys this week. We'll talk about that child at quarterback. We'll yeah. talk about him. So. Now the standings, I have 83 correct picks on the season. You have 79, so I've built back my four-point lead wow. that I lost all those weeks ago. Um, so it's been retained. We, we still got some time. Yes. We plenty, still got a few weeks. Plenty of time. And we have our three Thanksgiving games this week, as well as our slew of 1 o'clock games, 4 o'clock games, Sunday night and Monday night. So it's a full weekend of football, which is fantastic. And, of course... To start off, we got the Buffalo Bills going against your Detroit Lions that are on a three-game winning streak, two-road game win streak, and they're back at home. I have to pick Detroit just out of that reasoning. Buffalo. Easiest pick of your life, but I do see a chance. I was at the Buffalo-Cleveland game at Ford Field. Josh Allen does not look 100%. I will tell you that. He probably isn't. He could be by the time this game rolls around, but I don't imagine it. Stefan Diggs was visibly upset with the man yeah. for not getting him when he was open. Still so, ended up throwing him a touchdown pass, but yeah. Yes. 
So either Josh Allen will continue to be a little bit off or the lines will be carved up by Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs and it will be ugly. But I'm hoping not because Kirby Joseph has been incredible. A revelation. For this team so far. We both liked the pick when they made it. Yes. Granted, I get it. It's probably overhyped. But. I don't think it's overhyped. The way that he's playing has been so good. He's. I, I Honestly, I don't know how it's overhyped. Yeah. He has been like the real deal. Like, I, I don't know how else you put it. Yeah. And Aiden Hutchinson. Getting better every game. It's starting to starting to look really good. Yeah. Getting takeaways. Two picks. He got banged up a little bit in this game, but I think he should be fine. And it's wild. Uh, you know, the Lions have fired a couple coaches, and it's turned the team around. Um, they fired their DBs coach. Defense all of a sudden looked really good last week. They held Saquon Barkley to 22 yards on the ground. This is the worst run yeah. defense in the league. Maybe it's a fluke, but it's a good sign, that's for sure. Listen, three in a row, it's hard to say that's a fluke. Yes. If it was just one, I'd understand. If they look competitive against Buffalo, I might have to cheer for them going for the playoffs. Because right now, I didn't want them to ruin their pick. But right now, the Rams are going the opposite way. So the Rams are giving us a good pick. Our pick's going to be middle of the pack, which kind of stinks. But if we're able to get into that playoff race... Man, it would, it would be electric around here. Even if they stink. Even if they blow it in the first round. That'll just give everybody hope for next year. Jamison Williams hit the practice squad today. So, hopefully we see him in a few weeks. Still don't rush him back. But if we can get him on the field, you know, week 15, 16, 17, something like that. Just so we can see what we have would be amazing. Um, Yeah. it's It's a good time to be a Detroit fan. All right. After, I don't know what time. What time do you eat Thanksgiving? Do you do it as a Thanksgiving lunch? Thanksgiving. Ba- basically lunch. Brunch? Yeah. Okay. Start at lunch and then, yeah. Yeah. That's Periodically kinda, eat all day. That's kind of what we do, too. Yeah. Not necessarily straight at lunch. We usually let the game start. Maybe at halftime we go eat. I don't know. It depends. We always try to eat after. I try to push us to eat after the game, but, you know, it is what it is. Or during the first half and then watch the second half. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so after you do that, after you eat, maybe you could take a nap if you wanted to. Uh, the second game is the Giants at Dallas. Dallas, like we said, just blew out Minnesota. Giants lose it to the Lions. The Cowboys have momentum right now. It hates me to say just, yeah, I, I, I'm, there's no brainer to me. I'm taking the Cowboys. I agree. They're finally embracing Tony Pollard being they're They're given enough to keep Zeke happy. Mm hmm. But they're pretty much saying, Tony, you're the you're our guy. Yeah. Finally. And Dak is being super efficient, yeah. uh, throwing the ball. He's looked healthy lately. So yeah, Dallas is kind of a scary team at the moment, actually. And they're one of the front runners to possibly get OBJ. So I mean, if he's healthy, yeah. it'll give them another element. Uh New England at Minnesota. Oh, New boy. England has they've been winning, but have they really been winning in the past few weeks? <laughs> No. Like the Patriots fans, I don't I don't think they feel like they are a winning team. No. But they are. Yeah. Partially just due to their defense and their special teams. Uh yeah. some of the best around, to be honest. Um Matthew Judon is playing out of his mind, which is wild. Uh I think a lot of people thought that his career might have been kind of on the downturn, but he's looked good so far. Minnesota. Ugh. Justin Jefferson. That was I'm, a bad loss. Justin Jefferson is apparently dealing with a bit of a turf toe issue, which would be huge for them. So hopefully he's okay. But man, this is that was not a good, not a good loss. I I guess the only positive it's it was so bad that they can just move on and be like that they played awful. CBS literally changed the game on us. Yeah. Because the game was so bad. You don't see those losses in the NFL a lot. No. But New England, their entire strategy is making the game so ugly that the other team just like breaks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they they like it's it's not fun to watch, right? And like you said, I I don't think that's not the team Minnesota is. Mm-hmm. Neither of us believe they're like true contenders, 
but they're they're a quality football team. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna take them. Yeah. Uh for I the think, for the sake of everybody on Thanksgiving, let's hope it's not a New England ugly game. Yeah. I think I'll take Minnesota as well. I think there's some other games that I can uh split on. Okay. So after our Thursday slate of games, decent games, um, we move on to Sunday. We got Tampa playing at Cleveland. This could be a weird game that Cleveland wins, especially because of the weather. Nick Chubb was stuffed by the Bills. He did nothing. And Jacoby Brissett actually did really well. He was throwing dimes. Amari Cooper was insane, and this is going to be a home game for Amari Cooper where he's been fantastic. Tom Brady is used to playing in the cold. Yes. But are his teammates ready? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to take the Buccaneers. Darn it. I wanted to take the Bucs. I'll take Cleveland here. I do think it's an, enough of a coin flip. Um, so I'll take that. Um, I think Tampa is going to maybe get some things right after their bye week. That's just my feeling. But Cleveland, you know, if you got Nick Chubb on your team, you always got a chance. Cincinnati at Tennessee. That Tennessee win was good, but I, I would hate being a Titans fan, man. I just, you know this is fool's gold. Why? You get to watch Derrick Henry every year. I know, but you you know it's not going anywhere. And that's that's heartbreaking. Yeah, that is tough. Number one seed last year in the playoffs. We, the we win our round. division by the by default every year. Yeah, congratulations. Now they're playing Cincinnati. Jamar Chase is still hurt. Might be able to come back. I wouldn't count on mm. it, but they said there's a chance. They got into a shootout with the Steelers. I think I like the Steelers' skill talent more than the Titans. Besides Derrick Henry. Unless you're a big Nick w- Nesbrook Akine fan. Traylon Burks looked good last week, though. You pick first, Joey. I'm going with Tennessee. Okay. I'm going with the home team. Uh, I think Tennessee's defense is underrated. Um, and Cincinnati's a little banged up, so I'm just going to go with that. Even though Joe Burrow's looked pretty good. But if you can get pressure on Joe Burrow, then that's where Cincinnati struggles. Joe Mixon's hurt. Looks like Samaj P. Ryan's going to play, which, I mean, he had three touchdowns last week, so. I'll go Cincinnati. Okay. Houston at Miami. I'm not saying, I'm not going with, the, with Houston. Yeah. <laughs> Houston may be moving on to Kyle Allen. Does that change your opinion? Does it? Does it? Should it? <laughs> no. Will it? No. No. Absolutely not. Um. Yeah. It's kind of a sad story for Davis Mills, honestly. He he had he, listen, such... he got his. Ch- there are a lot of quarterbacks like him that don't get a chance. Yeah, no. And I, <laughs> it just thinks the way like he had a good finish to last year. Yeah, and you're like, oh, he had cool. the best year of all the rookie quarterbacks. Yeah. You start to think like, oh man, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Like maybe Houston found somebody, you know, was, late in the draft. It was and... a it was a nice little story for the time. Yeah, it's rough. No, no, no next level to Davis Mills, but hey. You're getting that top two pick. Yeah. And you're getting one of those guys, most likely. Yep. So, chin up, Houston. Good time to be a Houston fan. Yeah, Starting it's, over. It's, it's two a time. Again. It is two a time this Sunday. Chicago. Chicago at New York. Let's, let's talk. Let's talk. For a minute. Bring in Joe Flacco. Let's talk about everybody's favorite young quarterback. Zach Wilson. Zach. Oh, boy. Can you? He's been the talk of the town when, lately. When was the last time? Was it Johnny Manziel the last time a quarterback looking like this much of a D-bag? Probably. Him or Jameis. But Jameis backed it up a little Jameis bit. Jameis is more of like a clown. Like yeah. He's he's more but, of a just like a... And like I said, Jameis, he had actually some decent games where he won yeah. some games. How, how do you answer like that in the post game? You know that Joe Flacco still has more touchdowns than Zach Wilson on the season? <laughs> I saw that set and I thought it was wild. Listen, there are a lot of Jets fans that want to see Mike White. That's fair. So I, 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 they take either over Zach Wilson, but yeah, I, I'm I'm happy Flacco gets his last ride. I want to see him. I think if they want to make going. the playoffs, I think, and I know I'm like sounding like crazy over here, but I do think that Joe Flacco is like their best chance. He is if they still want to make a playoff run, and that's why I'm taking the Jets. Hmm. The Jets have a top three defense in the NFL. That that defense is ready to make a run. Yeah. And as if they have stability at quarterback, 
it shouldn't be a problem because mm-hmm. Zach Wilson is just missing everybody. Yeah, he's he's missing everyone. They they've become a well balanced offense, and their quarterback just can't get it done. And he's also just defiantly saying it's not my fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm going with the Jets. Okay. Well, if I knew that Joe Flacco was starting, I would immediately pick the Jets. But we don't know as of now. Even if Mike White starts, I'm taking the Jets. I might even if Mike White starts. <laughs> but it hasn't been totally official that Zach Wilson will be benched. It's just been a possibility. Chicago, on the other hand, Justin Fields might not play in this game. Who's we, their backup? Oh, it's, uh, I'll give you a chance because I do know this. Trevor Simeon. Yes. Yeah. And I think he gives them just enough of a chance to win this game. So I'll take Chicago on the 50-50. Um, you sure? Yes. Okay. All right. Trevor Simeon threw some touchdowns uh, when he was in Denver and stuff. And now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that reasoning. I mean, yeah, he's there, he's there in Denver. It was, I mean, it was the cool. Jets, the Jets offense is kind of the same way. So I, I think they, I think they got more punch to him. Justin Fields is the punch. Yeah. But I like Chicago having David Montgomery. Um, I think Darnell Mooney and uh, Chase Claypool will look, will look Cole better. Cole had a crazy catch last week. I think they'll look better with Trevor Simeon. They'll have to open up their passing game a little bit more. Obviously, you don't get the gadget plays that Justin Fields provides. Nobody gets that. Yeah. Um, I want to see Trevor throw it up at Sauce. I'd, I'd love to see that. I don't, but <laughs> throw it to the Let's other side. It. But, it's, it'll be fun. It'll uh, be fun times. Anyway. Atlanta at Washington. Washington officially Have they won named, five in a row? I believe so. They have officially named Taylor Heineke their starter. Listen, they put the chains on him. What a man. They iced him up. Mm -hmm. He is the opposite of Zach Wilson. Yeah. Honestly, in both sides, like Zach Wilson has all the talent. Taylor Heineke has some talent. Mm -hmm. Zach Wilson has none of the leadership. Taylor Heineke has all of it. Yeah. That team will run through a wall for Taylor Heineke right now. Because he's had to battle. He's had to battle for every, every snap that he gets. Yeah. Um, and shouts out to Cardero Patterson for breaking the kick return record last week. Yeah. I didn't even know he was one away from breaking it. Right. That yeah, is, that's really something. It's kind of crazy. He turned into just like a high level weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it won't be enough. Atlanta most likely has lost Kyle Pitts to the season. Uh, pretty sad end. And Atlanta now gets even more boring to watch on TV. Yet they keep winning games. I don't know. If you're a Falcons fan, like, what are your emotions? Are you are you sad? Are you angry? Are you indifferent? Like, what is? I would hate it. <laughs> I would hate it because you feel like you feel like this team is going nowhere and they keep winning games. Like <laughs> that's that's the worst. But fans keep showing up because they're winning. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, I don't. Yeah. This it's is a weird scar- one. To me, this is a scary game to pick. Washington's got all the hype, but Atlanta is just that team. I'm telling you, they cover the spread. All the time. They win games when you don't think they should. I don't know. I think you do know after what you Part just said. Part of me wants to pick the Falcons. Then do it, sir. I'll pick the Falcons. Do it. I'll pick the co- Commanders. But I kind of want the Commanders, commanders. to just keep winning. So, <laughs> Yeah. That's fine. Denver at Carolina. Holy moly, can we not watch this game? I think it was announced that Sam Darnold is starting. Really? Let me Let me check again. Like, on my way here, I saw breaking news, I think, that Sam Darnold is starting, which who knows if that will make any difference. Maybe I should hold on to DJ Moore for a, a minute longer uh, in yeah. fantasy. Panthers QB Sam Darnold to start in week 12. Okay, maybe I'm not dropping DJ Moore right away. Hmm, interesting. Could be good because Carolina looks awful when Baker Mayfield starts. Yeah. Denver? The Broncos got close to winning. They they yeah they lost in yeah, overtime to close, the Raiders. But their defense is real. It that, is that defense is also like the Jets. They're built to win, and that's why I can't pick the Panthers. Yeah, they're they're gonna Sam Darnold is gonna be seeing ghosts once again. Maybe I, I thought it was wild though that you know Pat Sertain has had such a good season. He stopped a lot of wide receivers, but Devontae Adams just carved him up. He's yeah. There's only so much you can do against those top guys. It was crazy. You'll, you'll, you're going to win some, and you're going to definitely lose some. So you're going with Denver? Yeah. Okay, I'll go with Carolina. Uh, it seems like whenever Baker Mayfield is not under center. They look better. They look better. <laughs> yeah. They're just a better team. Their defense is still pretty good. Um, 
And yeah, this, this game I just don't want to see either way. Baltimore at Jacksonville. What are the what are the odds? Baltimore is another weird team. I love them, but what are the odds? The Jacksonville wins. It's at home. Baltimore gets warm weather though. I'm going with Baltimore. They're my guys. They just find ways to win. This is not the time. I'm going Ravens. Okay. This isn't the time. Not the time. Yeah. Fair. Chargers at Cardinals. Good. Do we need to think about? We this? saw Trace McSorley last week or last night. He played. Yeah. I didn't watch the second half. Yep. End of the game. Yeah. I just I just saw Uncle Colt last few drives. Yep. Yeah, I go with the Chargers. That's not good. I mean, Chargers, Chargers are struggling too, though. It stinks. Now that and talk about a fan base that's frustrated. Yeah, they've got a lot of injuries though. Like they lost Mike Williams again in that game. Keenan Allen just coming back. I don't know. Las Vegas at Seattle. Seattle coming off the bye. Vegas actually looked pretty good. I'm going Seattle. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go Vegas. I think this is where Vegas maybe gets back on track a little bit. Uh, Might ne- be a little too late. But. I'll never believe in them again. Okay, that's fair. That's totally fair. Ever. I shouldn't either. I yeah. should just not pick I'm, them. But I'm done. You know, Josh Jacobs is on my fantasy team, so playing favorites. Rams at Chiefs. <laughs> Don't worry. I wrote down uh, Chiefs. Yeah. Listen, they sold their souls for a Super Bowl. They're fine. Yeah. <laughs> They're fine. Saints at the 49ers. 49ers just Andy Dalton balled out. Maybe it's it's probably because it was the Rams. Yeah, it was random. Andy Dalton. He was, he, looked he, was bad out there hoping. The, he, he looked pretty bad the previous two weeks. So Yeah, but look, look at what the 49ers just look did. Look what Jimmy Cardinals. Garoppolo did. He was efficient yeah. through four touchdowns. They got a ton of weapons. Yeah, 49ers. Yeah, their, their defense is too good sense. as well. Green Bay at Philadelphia. This is so boring. This has just been a predictable just pick em week for me. Yeah? Nothing extra. Yeah, Eagles. Like, I'm, I'm not even – I'm not taking the chances. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But that's I, true. The, Green Bay had hope for one week and then uh, disappeared immediately. Titans sucked the life out of them. Christian Watson looks good, though. That's a plus. Yeah. Pittsburgh at Indianapolis. We can split this one. Yeah, we can. We could split this one. I'll let you pick first. You're a Pittsburgh guy. So, I used to be. More of a Mike Tomlin guy. (laughs) Not anymore. (laughs) Uh, You're a Kenny Pickett guy. So the Colts. You're a George Pickens guy, right? <laughs> I am a George Pickens guy. I am. <laughs> the Colts played the Eagles close. Jeff Saturday. Jeff Saturday is getting the best out of those dudes. They have looked a lot better. Nothing makes sense anymore. What is an NFL coach, Joey? I don't know. What makes you qualified? Have you played Madden before? <laughs> I'm ready to send my resume. Speaking of video game football on a sidetrack, they delayed college football, which I think is good. Because there's no reason to rush it. They announced Dynasty and Road to Glory is back. Cool. Yeah. None of that Madden nonsense. But, yeah, I don't know what makes a coach anymore. Um, I I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go with the Colts. <laughs> Riding the wave. Yeah. And I will go with Steelers. Nothing makes sense. TJ Watt's back, and it seems like it's unlocked their entire team somehow. I don't know how that works, but, you know, they hung in with the Bengals. They got smoked by the Bengals last time they played each other. Um, so, yeah, I'll just go with that. Pittsburgh looking better. Najee Harris looking better. Um, yeah, should be fun. Again, super fun weekend of sports. I'm excited. Got Thanksgiving football. Got Michigan-Ohio State. And then your Sunday slate of football games again. I can't wait. I'm, I'm loving it. Just eating food all weekend, sleeping, watching sports. This is this is honestly one of the best weeks of the year every year. Yep. Yeah. Spend time with family. Eat some stuff. Yep. Drink a little, maybe. Yell at the TV. Yeah. Alrighty. This has been views from the sidelines. We'll see you next week after once we're actually in December. Which is wild. Um and we'll I mean we'll go over Michigan, Ohio State. Good luck, Malik. I will be very emotional if Michigan wins this game. I will say some ridiculous things and I will regret every bit of it. So something to look forward to for next week. Happy Thanksgiving.